Hey guys, just want to review the Mayflower Compact uh, very quickly. Uh, don't forget, it was a covenant, a promise of a civil body politic. You remember how we define that in class? We define it as a legislative body. It was a body that was going to make laws, or in the Mayflower Compact, it did say constitution, which is what our laws have been created uh, with. And believe me, it was uh, very important that those people on the Mayflower decided to give their consent to be governed. Another important target that we went over this week is the House of Burgesses. Remember, that was the first legislative body in the New World. Uh, it was the first representative body in the New World. Uh, they created a bicameral house. That's what cameral stands for. It was a bicameral legislature. And remember, there was two parts of the house. It was the General Assembly and the State Assembly. Uh, and again, it's the representative government uh, that we didn't really have in England the way that we had it in the New World. Got to touch on the Enlightenment thinkers too. Um, John Locke is the most important and he's a car question on the Regents. Um, and what I mean by that is I'll buy you a brand new car, matchbox car, if I'm wrong. Uh, John Locke is going to talk about natural rights. And what he is going to say is life, liberty, and property. Real important to remember John Locke. Uh, the other two guys, uh, Montesquieu, was separation of powers. Uh, remember, he was the one that said if we put um, all of the power in the hands of one, then uh, it would be tyrannical. And then uh, the last was uh, Voltaire. And uh, Voltaire was about freedom of the press. The reasons why the Virginia House of Burgesses came about, the Mayflower Compact was created, is because these people did have examples uh, from the English government. For example, uh, the English government had a parliament, had the House of Commons and a House of Lords, uh, very similar to the House of Burgesses. Uh, we also created, uh, the English created, uh, the English Bill of Rights. It didn't give everybody rights. Um, it was mostly to barons and uh, wealthy landowners, but it will slowly spread to uh, most of the people, and uh, oh yeah, the Magna Carta. Uh, the Magna Carta uh, protected church rights, and it made sure that barons um, weren't illegally forced into prison. They were going to get a trial by their jury. So again, not for everybody, but these are examples that our colonists had learned from, and thus we really start creating our own form of democracy. Um, but again, don't forget, we're not just a democracy. We are a republic. We have representatives speak for us. I'm going over the Zenger trial because often lately it's been asked on the history regents. It might just come up on your quiz on Friday too. Hey guys, it's important to remember that uh, really no democracy have, has ever existed um, without freedom of the press. Um, John Peter Zenger was a German immigrant living in New York and he printed a journal called uh, the New York Journal. It was a weekly, you know, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a newspaper. And in that newspaper, he was printing um, some information about their corrupt governor, how he was rigging elections, how he was allowing the French, uh, our enemy, as English citizens, uh, to explore New York Harbor, which was very important for trade and commerce. Well, anyways, uh, Zenger is arrested in 1733. And as he's going to trial, the governor is packing the um, jury with people who are on his payroll. So while he's in jail, his wife is still running the journal, the newspaper, and printing this, and she changes public opinion uh, against the government where people are really speaking out about having a real jury of his peers, which he gets. Now his lawyer, uh, Mr. Hamilton, not Alexander Hamilton, it was Andrew Hamilton, um, admits that Zenger uh, printed that stuff in his journal. But then he asks the other side to prove that it's wrong. And of course the other side can't do this because he was a corrupt governor. 
Um, when the trial ended, the jury deliberated for all of 10 minutes, came out and said that Mr. Zenger was not guilty. This is a step uh, towards our freedoms, towards liberty and the American uh, nation. And of course, this will eventually become part of the Bill of Rights in the First Amendment.